Hi, my name is Libby Thomas. And my name is Mia Lamuso. And today we're here for the John Humphrey Center for Peace and Human Rights conducting our stream recording project. So today we're looking to conduct interviews related to poverty, access to services, and justice leading up to our conference in the fall. So what we're looking to do is get some foot traffic from the soccer match between Canada and China for the Women's World Cup, as well as the Pride Festival that's happening this weekend. All throughout this summer, our stream recording team will be gathering interviews of from Edmonton, just leading up to our conference in September on poverty, access to justice, and criminalization. So make sure you check it out. So we're really concerned about youth um, getting access to education. So in your experience, both uh, past and how accessible do you think is education? For, for youth in this province. Uh, but uh, but I got my education. I got my education. I got university. But uh, when 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 you get when you get education to uh, to get off of jobs, mm -hmm. I never got all the off of jobs. I never worked. I never worked and what what did you study? If you don't mind me asking. Political, political science. That's what I study. That's interesting. Yeah. I myself like I have. Two and a half years of university education. Mm -hmm. I dropped out because of drinking, you know. But, uh, I think I could have been probably okay with or without it. Well, I mean, based off of you know just my interactions with people that I know that work in that field, I feel like the like at least the staff who work in that field, they're I you know, overworked, there's just not enough places for people to go, you know, they don't have enough time with them, they don't have a enough resources and that kind of thing. I think in general though, like social services, there's just not, it's just not quite up to the standards of like, the, the, you know, it's not, it doesn't meet the needs. Um, do you think the people with the government are they kind of cutting the education system, kind of like how does that make us aware of the different services out there? So let's say there was a child coming out to you, would you be able to direct the child to the different services in the marriage society? I, I don't know if I would. Like I feel like I would be able to do the research and figure it out, but not off, not off. Like if somebody just came up to me and said, like I don't have anywhere to go, I don't have any food. I would, you know, I, like there's the youth emergency shelter. I know about that, um, but I couldn't say specifically anything else really and I don't even know if that would be the place to go. I mean I imagine it's a start and they probably have a lot of resources but yeah. Some are but then some are kind of difficult to get to. Like I know that there's a lot of um, stuff that I don't know about but like other people know about and then they always let me know these other like services and stuff like that like even if it's for the low income families and stuff. Like I feel like I don't know a lot of them. Which ones are the more difficult ones to get into? Or? Um, I find that like for younger, like, like adults, I find that it's like, a lot harder for them to get into like more like, than they needed, or like just get involved with maybe income or like child like child care, like stuff like that. I find that like, kind of hard. That's one thing that I have struggled with. In terms of health care, in terms of uh, medical care, uh, do you think access is is enough or is it just, is it there or is it just difficult to get to or? With like with health care, um, for you, like I don't really know because like for me, because I'm covered through my bad, like through Indian affairs, right, right. like I had all of that, like I could go to like a dentist. Right. I would be covered. Right. Like, and it was like that growing up and stuff. Right. But I find like for other youth who aren't covered, yeah. I find it's harder for them because like they have to go through like so many different steps of having to try to find like a social worker or right. getting like another worker like right. somebody's housing program right. to try and get them like a benefit card or something like that. Like, 
know about more stuff instead of just a few things here and there. Like, you don't really hear about all these programs unless you go to, like, maybe... Like, I know the library has some, but they don't have a lot still. Like, they don't have ones that are still out there to the advertise and stuff like that. Um, so a lot more advertising. I think Edmonton does have a lot of women shelters. I think they need family shelters because um, that's one thing that I don't see here in Edmonton is family shelters. They have family shelters down in Calgary, but they don't have any of that here in Edmonton. And like a lot of the women shelters here do not take women on the street to be homeless or in a basic relationship because I, me and my daughter were homeless for a while and we've tried to get into women shelters here. They would not take me because I would not be good in a basic relationship. And so we went to Calgary and we got into a shelter there right away because it was a family shelter like me. But like anybody come in there and like give them a place to stay, um, help them with housing and stuff like that. And I think Edmonton needs more of that, like for the women and families. Um, do you guys have any experience um, with you know, seeing children all struggling with access to health care? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a nursing student, so I've been involved with health care for a bit. And I know for sure that um, children don't, don't have the opportunity to talk to them. Or they're scared of doctors or scared of dentists or whatever, whatever kind of thing it is. Or parents who don't have the funds to 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 if we're struggling with this, how, how much more difficult do you think it is for youth that are not in university, or particularly the youth that are living in the it must be extremely difficult. Like just a few days ago, or a while ago, there was a story in the news about this lady. She was turned away from a health clinic because, you know, she couldn't pay. She didn't have her health card up or a health card or whatever. She couldn't go through the bureaucratic process. Like, you know, whatever it was she was missing. It was a forty dollar fee she was supposed to give. She couldn't do that. And I mean, you know, how do you prevent instances like that from happening? I can't imagine how difficult it must be where you can't, where you don't have maybe you don't have money to maybe do that. And she didn't even have bus. You know, she didn't even have bus fare, and you can tell her, oh, you know, just go to the nearest hospital, they'll be mm -hmm. Even then, like, um, I just finished my clinical rotation at the Royal Allied Hospital, and there's a lot of um, homeless population that come into the hospital, but they come into the hospital after they've reached a the point where they, they can't do anything but come into the hospital. They're basically saving their life at that point, so if they if they understood or someone helped them or with health healthcare specifically, with like many centers or whatever, where, where they had more opportunities before I got to that point, it would be way better because they wouldn't be in the hospital dying and they wouldn't have to be